All right, welcome to the Vargas Team Podcast on a special episode because I am not with the home team. Um, I am with a special guest, the first guest of the year. Um, so if you've been following the Vargas Team, you know that we had a, our very first guest last last year. But this is a new year. So it's, it's interesting because... Um, Chris is somebody that I've been wanting to interview and you know there's a lot like I was mentioning we were talking about before was um you're you're somebody who has lived a lot of lives and I wanted to capture those lives on camera because a lot of those lives pertain to real estate and a lot of cool things that I think that uh the real estate space is doing and what you're doing and there's a lot of you know um I guess things that that we have in common and that I think the audience would would uh, appreciate and get value from so First and foremost, Chris, how do we know each other? Well, you're my brother-in-law. Um, <laughs> so you kind of had to do this podcast, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like one of those things where it's just like, well, you know, if, if I'm going to marry into this family, I might as well go do the fun parts of this family, not just, you know, get married to my wife. You know? <laughs> Which well, is not the fun part. Yeah, that's not the fun part. That's, I'm just kidding. I love you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love talking. I love, uh, as you can yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I love like, discussing things that I'm really interested in. Real estate's one of those things, but life, podcasting. Yeah, we seem to have a lot of similar interest in that yeah. in that regard. What? Well, I think that's the beauty. So, like, I would never say, I think one of the greatest things about our relationship is I don't think you and I have the same worldview. We've discussed this on several parts. But what you and I are really good at is not focusing on what we disagree on, but focusing on the things we agree on and focusing on no. the things that we have in common. And I think mm. that's, like, a big thing that, Maybe the world could gain in 2024. Yeah. Like, let's not focus on the things <laughs> yeah. that we diverge. Let's, yeah. let's focus in and really love on the areas that we have in common and things that the same interests we do have. And so, That's such a valid point because right now, not to get like into this political thing because right. everybody on, on YouTube is doing the whole political commentary. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like the country is so divided now yeah. and people like they used to like each other now don't like each other all of a sudden because wow. you know one or two different policies that may they may disagree on or just whoever they're voting for or whatever but yeah you're right i've never thought of it that way but we we've never let that guy kind of get into our no. and you can't i think and we don't really spend a lot of time like yeah we discuss it and w both you and i have very strong opinionated we're not we're not scared to like have those conversations but i think what you were just saying we we enjoy having more of the conversations where we like certain interests and we just focus on those yeah you know? and i think that's what people should do i think you just it's like why waste time on figuring out like because here's the thing you're never going to change someone's mind mm. you can influence a change but people have to change their own mind. yeah they have to get you know what i mean they have to, to reach come that. to grasp with they have to go seek out that extra information they have to go maybe ex expand their horizons and say okay let me see where this person's coming from but you yourself are never going to convince them what you can do is you can just lay the information down state your point in a respectful and loving way and then move on all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that that you're a hundred percent right. But anyways, uh, before people completely turn off, um, oh, they yeah, they're they're like these people are sp speaking politics. I thought this was a real estate show. Yeah, ten x my life. I want to know how to invest in properties and buy real estate. And should I buy in in Miami right now? Yes, you should contact me. No, Always. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, speaking into certain things. So we were talking um, off camera about you know how the market the rental market has has come and how we've feel like we've gotten older right yeah. um because you were mentioning that you're 39 years old which is crazy um Just because you because you, you you look 24 <laughs> um but within that time frame you were bringing up this kind of uh not the analogy but like this example that you're at the what is it the football game what you were at the um game right yeah so like 2023 was like my year of like a midlife crisis i don't know oh, why, that's right your midlife but crisis. i was like going through i was going through it i was deep in my bag of feelings yeah and so i was just trying to figure out like man what is it and it kind of dawned on me like during football season what like what was happening and so you know i'm at the tailgate and i'm watching these college kids go by yeah. and they look like babies right so then i immediately i'm like all right let me try and like remember my college days and it's like there Forever are so ago. many different things that transpired since i was in college and you i'm just like holy crap i'm getting old just to give you another example they're they're joking that like lincoln park is classic rock really i'm like <laughs> just like falling out of my chair like falling down who's saying this this new generation there's like memes that yeah. go around and it's like, oh, I'm, man. like I'm not ready for this I, and like early and 2000s you're a massive fashion Park is like becoming back like i'm just like guys 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 we need to pump the brakes yeah. off because we're going a little fast can we just chill in the 90s for yeah. a little bit like bring the 90s fashion back for a little bit longer really I'm good with it wasn't it. it wasn't that Anything great though. to get me to the point where i'm feeling old 
Oh, like okay. Right now, we're getting to the points where our people are wearing. Do you remember those like giant like silver ball necklaces? Mm-hmm. Like, people, mm-hmm. like, the puka shells were a couple years ago, mm-hmm. right? Like now, now they're bringing back the balls, the big Jinko jeans, the wide pants. I mean, I'm even wearing yeah. them now. Like, just what are we doing? I I'm honestly the the wide pant uh, style that's coming back. I don't think I'll ever get back on that wave. I'm it a, was a wave that I was very happy in letting go. I was an early adopter of fashion things in like the like in my earlier years, my twenties. I was definitely like, oh, whatever's hot and cool. Now I'm a very late adopter, and it's like funny because it's like I, I wait. I'm like, let me just see how this is. Like, let me, let me it, because some things do grow on you, right? They do yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes you're why. like, you see, and you're like, that's terrible. Yeah, it's, it, it, at but, first, like the like the gray thing, you should laugh at yeah. that. But I hated the Yeezys. When yeah, I, I was just gonna Yeezys, say that. I was like, well, but who but the wave the hovercrafts the wave feet? runners I hated originally, like, and then after a while I'm like, I'm like, who wants to wear a dad shoe? Yeah. What? Like but that? then the dad shoe became in, and now like most of my closet are dad shoes. Exactly, you know? dude. And now I'm just like, all right, well, just I guess board. we're go- I guess we're going that way. Yeah, yeah. Similar. Just similar. <laughs> similar. I'm like, all right, plug me in. At this point, I'm not even fighting Big Brother. I'm like, what are you looking up? Are you as interested in what I'm searching on the internet as I am? Cool, awesome. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, that's my noisy, noisy monitor. Anyways. Um, but no, you're you're absolutely right. And similar to fashion, which I think we both share, whether people like our fashion or not I, is up in the air. But I, we like it, right? which it. is kind of important. <laughs> and I've always talked about on this on this channel because um, and I like sound like a broken record. Like to me, especially in, in my line of work where I'm in real estate, I'm you know, I, I run I run a, my own property management business and I'm an investor and all this stuff. I have the liberty to kind of wear whatever I want. Yeah, which is great. Um, and. I like to express myself in the way that I dress. And I think that, that and you kind of share that as well. Like, yeah, man, it's an old Deion Sanders yeah. adage. Look good, feel good, play good. Right, exactly. And well, true. And and that there's a lot to it because every time, you know, I wear a suit or something like that, it's like the uniform and you just feel ready to work, listen, you know? Listen, bro. You go to the doctor and homie's wearing a busted up wife beater, some some jorts <laughs> and a trucker hat. Are you gonna let him operate on you? Yeah, that's no, true. I need scrubs. Yeah, I need. I need a Rolex on your wrist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want you to be a little douchey. Uh, okay. I want you to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just need that because yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, if you're gonna open me up, I'm like, I, I need yeah. you to do that. I, right. Okay? I don't need you going. Let's look under the uh, hood uh, real uh, quick. Uh, what you got uh, yeah. there? All man. our doctor clients just tuned, just turned off right now. Oh, no, they all yeah. love that. Like, no, yeah, no, they they works. they agree. Every industry has its own like cliches. That for sure. You know, I joke, especially with Riza. Riza is my sister, who is also Chris's wife. Um, she's an attorney and does all our title work, by the way. So yep. she's Great. phenomenal. So she's if you thorough. So if you need to, um, you know, do a quick claim deed or purchase a pot, whatever, you know, we can contact Riza. But I always joke with her. I'm like, you know, whatever profession you're in, you seem not to want to watch the TV shows or movies within that profession. Yeah. Like I, I was hounding her to watch Suits for she's like four years five years and then it came back on netflix she's like hey have you ever heard this show suits oh you mean the show i've been trying to tell you to watch for like seven years when it was on usa yeah yeah i've heard of it uh but a lot of professions and going to kind of the lives that you've lived you were in the news uh profession yes. right so exactly. there's news tv shows and there's tv shows on that like yeah. did you ever catch yourself watching that or you're of like course. oh it's just not believable no of course i'd love like the newsroom but with andy yeah. sorkin for- by Andy Sorkin, like that is an amazing show. Of course, like anything else, you recognize that things on TV are like Hollywood eyes or glorified. So like it's like they only capture like the maybe the ten percent of the actual industry. But I, I love watching that stuff because it's like it's a way for you to connect. It's a way for you to be like, yeah, it's like I'm sure like you love. Do you watch? I mean, I don't know. Do you watch Million Dollar List? Yeah, you love that, yeah, right? It's I haven't good. watched it in a long time, but it's a but great it's, show. It's good. It's very unbelievable. It's it's yeah, <laughs> and it's you you recognize there are there are vestiges of of realness that are in there that you can relate to of course yeah and then on top of that you also kind of laugh at the satire that they can create because you're just like while that's not every real estate agent there are definitely real estate agents like that that are out there yeah and i just i just find like if we're on the um the tv show let's let's say this show um i've always found it hilarious that they're like hey we're gonna get this deal done let's go have lunch together the the agents by the (laughs) way you call your seller and then i'll call my buyer and let's broker this deal right now that never Never. happens (laughs) plus the likelihood of both of them being available ready to negotiate that specific time while you're having lunch and then stepping like and it's like it's like hot potato is that what it's like you just like toss it to the other yeah you're basically like yeah my my buyer came back at 7.4 million not a dollar higher and then the guy's like eating his salad he's like all right let me let me figure this out be right back and then it's like 7.5 or no deal and then it's just like 
nobody has that amount of time. I mean, I would imagine that you don't have that amount of time, but I've never been invited by, but I think that's by one, an agent. That's one of the reasons why I liked working with you, not to like gas you up and not to like, you know, sell you guys on you and Steven. But no. I think one of the things is like, I think you need a real estate agent who one can talk to you in a, in a very personal way. So like in a personable way where they're, they're relating, they're explaining things to you, but also that can kind of give you the business and be like, listen, man, what you're expecting, I would love for that to like happen. And, We'll throw it out there, but let's 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 set our <laughs> expectations at a realistic like level. Right. You know what I mean? I think you always sh- shot straight with me, even when I got a little crazy, because like you know me, I get a little crazy from yeah. time to time. Yeah. But I I love that about you. I think that is what has allowed you to be successful in what you do. Is people respect people who respect them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you just want that. People don't people don't want to deal with douchebags. People don't want to deal with people who are gassing you up and gaslighting you. And they want to deal with okay. Especially when you're talking about the home, mm-hmm. right? You're talking about someone's home. Their most traumatic um, event in a person's <laughs> life is moving. Yeah. Is know? that real? For real? It is. It's death, yeah. divorce, and moving. Oh, I thought taxes would be there or something. Yeah, the ta- no, <laughs> it's top five for sure. Most people are just like, turbo tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they top get their five. CPA and be like, you do it, Bill. Yeah. No, that, that, I mean, first and foremost, I appreciate that. Um, you know, let me know how much I owe you after, yeah. after the podcast. But um, yeah, for sure. I definitely think that in, in this profession, like every profession, people like to work with people that they like. And if you're likable and, and if and, and I th- and I think, too, I've cultivated such a great client base that the people that I work with and it wasn't always like that. But but definitely now I've been afforded to work with some amazing people that g- going out to show them properties or or sell their property um, doesn't even feel like work. It just feels like, hey, we get to catch up today, you know, go have lunch or, you know, I get to get this transaction done for you. And a lot of that was with you. Like, I've, obviously, you're my brother-in-law, but a lot of people don't like their brother-in-laws. It's not necessarily like the, the number of thing, but you and I are super close in that regard. And we've done a lot of real estate together. Um, but which is kind of to the point, because I give your example in real estate a lot. Um, and it's awesome to finally put the person who that that's there, because I would always tell people, yeah, I would always tell people, you bought a single family home in Belmead, which we sold you, yep. which is a beautiful home, by the way. It was great. Yeah. I love that house. You had a super traumatic event happen to you yes. at the house, which we're going to get into. But what I was telling people is like the growth in Miami real estate from the time that you bought that, which was a hot market at the time, right? And you were, and I remember you and I having the conversation of you saying like, am I buying at the top of the market? Like, are we like spending way too much money for this? And me kind of going back and like we looked at the comps we looked at the historical appreciation year over year and like we really like sat down and said okay this is market value or if it's not it's slightly over whatever it is and we have to wait around this amount of years like we can't assume we don't have a crystal ball but we could definitely make educated guesses and boy were we wrong in like a good way like because i remember you bought the home realistically the 2020 to 2022 real estate market specifically here in south florida I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, is such a unique event. It is such a like one in one trillion chances because you and I were talking about it pre pre pandemic. You're like, yeah, there's going to be a housing pop and we just got to get ready for it. We got to get ready for it. And Mm -hmm. 18, 24 months, 18 to 24 months. And it just never came. And And it's just like one of those things where you just I think sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you I mean, I still got lucky with that house. Like, we still, we made money on it, which was great. I love that. You you gave me, like, the realistic, hey, this is where we're going to be at. And I think if you want to get out and you want to you wanna try and find something at a reasonable price somewhere now else. Now is the time to do it. Because that's the other thing, too, people always forget about. People are always like, oh, I need to sell. I need to sell. The market's hot. Market's hot. Market's hot. Yeah, well, guess what? Yeah, if you're a buyer in that market. <laughs> yeah, if you're a buyer tough. in that market, you're going to sell, which yeah. is going to make you a buyer eventually. Right. Like, it's going to be hard. So. People always kind of forget those little things like that, and I think you were very, you were very thorough in, in letting me know like this is what to expect. Yeah, no, that's such a valid point because um, when people are selling their home, they want top dollar, and obviously being in a seller's market is going to give you that. But you know, I prefer neutral markets where yes, both parties are winning. Like you're going to get a great deal, right? Yep. Sure, if you stick around, you could probably sell it for a lot more. But when you're on the buying side of that equation, you're also going to get a fair deal, and it makes no sense for you to sell your home for 20 or 30 percent more to only buy a home for 20 to 30 percent more because you did nothing you exactly. know you're, essentially you're, yeah and you're it, uh, to me you also want to look at too it's like well what are you getting into are you do you need to get a bigger space like what we needed or do you need to downsize because that those things will and then again the old ad 
knowledge, location, 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 where are we going? Like we went from east to west because we wanted more bang for our buck. Right. And so we had that luxury. I remember like with like our house currently that we're living in right now, we were talking to you, we were like, oh, we have this budget. And then we quickly saw houses <laughs> in that budget. We don't have that budget anymore. Yeah. That budget's no longer available, yeah. which I love that you were like, okay, let me show you. But like, this is all we have. Yeah. And it's like, I think you need a realtor like that. Like I, like I keep going back to this where it's just like someone who not only knows you, but genuinely has your best interest at heart. Because I think if you deal with a real estate agent who is only trying to make a quick buck, trying to pad their stats, you know, oh, I sell, you know, sold X amount of million dollar homes or ten, tens of million dollar homes. It's like, that's great. But it's like, I, I want to be able to use you. I want to be able to send my cousin to you. I want to send my my friend to you. you know? Right. And that's why you want people who are well versed, right? Educated in the mm-hmm. market. They know trends. They know the area. But then they're also going to be like, "Hey, listen, I would love to sell you this home, or I would love to get you this price for this home." But it's like I don't think it's going to work out for you. Right. For either party, yeah. me as a realtor or you as a buyer or seller. No. Yeah, you're right. Um, Knowing the market for sure is going to help. Um, and then kind of, again, we, we, we can't determine what's going to happen in the market. But, you know, speaking with people and saying, like, what's your short-term play? What's your long-term play? Because yep. those will drastically influence where you should or shouldn't buy or how you should buy. And, like, if you're thinking about living here for two to three years and trying to sell it, it's probably going to be near impossible. With the exception of these last few years, which was, like, a right. black swan event, you know. Um, but Miami real estate is still hot. And we were actually talking about... Funny enough, like how you were paying a thousand nine hundred dollars in, in Edgewater, percent. right? In your first apartment for a nine hundred square foot um, at Bay Park Plaza, pre facelift, as you were saying, <laughs> yeah, uh, pre renovation and in in real estate terms, but yeah, basically the same thing. And now that same apartment is like three grand, it's insane. or probably a little over three grand at yeah. this point. And how unaffordable Miami has gotten because. It's sad. In, in in a way, it's great, and, and in a way, it's terrible. You know, obviously, if you're an investor and you're buying and you bought those properties, like whoever yeah. bought that property and rented it for you for 900 bucks, you know, obviously uh, bought it at a reduced rate, and then now they're renting it for $3,200, like an amazing investment, you know? But at the same, by the same token, people who are getting into the market now who are maybe just getting out of college, you were afforded the ability to have a decent place to live go to work, make a decent income while you were uh, uh, progressing in your career and not have to really worry about that. And now it's kind of like, all right, well, 80% of your income is going to rent or you live with a roommate or, you know, a bunch of one, some things that you actually had to do, but you, you were able to kind of get out of, right. And yeah. it's just not fair. Do you feel like people now in the age that you got out of college and started your life have like a way harder time doing so? I don't think so. I think this is the issue with every generation. So every generation yeah. thinks they're they have it the hardest that their their situations are the most unique Fair. and that no one is dealing with what they're dealing with. When if you go through a fine tooth comb, every generation has its advantages and its disadvantages, disadvantages, right? And so it's just a matter of like okay, like and you also have to recognize where you're at in your life. I, this one guy told me this. I I, I wish I would have remembered who told me this, because, but I remember the saying more, which was, he was telling me about decades of your life. And he's like, I was I was coming out of my my 20s going into my 30s and he was like dude he's like you're in the best part of your life he's like your 20s is the worst decade it's the worst of your life the reason why you are broke you have no money (laughs) you're building and trying building or identifying a career you want to enter and then you're trying to figure yourself and figure your life out right so you're like everything is just chaos right yeah i would agree with that for sure back to point number one you're broke yeah you know what i mean and then you get into 30s, so you've kind of established yourself somewhat in terms of a career. You're kind of on mm-hmm. a trajectory. You've made, you have a little yeah. bit of money. You have a little bit of freedom. You can do those things. 40s, you're set. You've got money. You can do whatever you want. It's playtime. Right? Yeah. Not really, but, but yeah. But in my terms. point is, is like every generation is going to have that. And so it's a matter of everyone's looking at the next generation or someone else in their life. And they're like, I should be there. And it's like, bro, when I was living at that 900 square foot uh, or the $900 a month unit, I was working two jobs. Your sister was working a, a full time. Yeah, job. you know what I mean. And we had, so technically we had almost three incomes going into that place, and we were still living paycheck to paycheck, mm, yeah. barely scraping things together to the point to where the guy was like, "Yeah, I'm sorry, but we got to raise your rent to twelve hundred dollars." And even that was like a and dagger. That, that yeah. was not even a dagger. That was a death sentence. Like that yeah. one, we're like, "All right, well, I guess I'm back home." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mom coming back home. Yeah, like it's one of those things, and so it's like you just. I think every generation, every person has to look at their life and go. Okay, these are the cards I'm dealt. 
I need to play my hand in this. Yeah. And it's so true because now people speak or, and you know, you see those memes going around. It's like, yeah, my parents are always talking about like, how have you not bought your house and all that stuff? And they're like, you mean when you bought your house when it was $47,000, like whatever. And I get the joke, but at the same time, I can argue that point by saying, well, these people were doing business with faxes, you know, like, well, not only it's that, like but they didn't have the internet. That's you what I'm saying. Diversify you right, you right nowadays, there's so many avenues to make money. Now, right. And the easiest it's ever been to make money, to we, be honest. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. In order for our parents to have done what we're doing at this moment, it would cost them thousands of dollars to have an hour conversation <laughs> and put, put it on anywhere remotely where people would see it. It wouldn't even been in the realm of possibility. Yeah, that's not an, that's not it's an not, option. Just Afforded yeah. just to the people like news anchors and things of that nature. If you had to be in that career, you'd have to be already an influencer of some. The word influencer wasn't even around. It was like oh. you were a celebrity essentially. And in, like I know this sounds stupid, and this is gonna live on this 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 um, domain. But YouTube, like YouTube, Change you can go game. learn anything. There, I actually people used to joke about when I used to say YouTube University. Like they're like, you can't learn. I'm like, dude. I learned how to invest in real estate no, and I haven't been absolutely. wrong, <laughs> you know, on YouTube university and just watching hours and hours. Like these are also the difference where I would say there's people who are actually doing it on YouTube that are telling you like, you know, every, you know, you have to cycle through a bunch of bad stuff as well. It's not yeah. just like everything there is golden, but when you find the right people, you're like, these are people that are doing it, know how to actually teach. And it's very uh, digestible. And then there's a library of content that at your own pace, at your own time, you can go through it. Whereas, not in all senses, but some universities may have people who will teach the theory, but they're not actually doing it. Oh, and not only that, but it's like, what good is that? How applicable is that theory going to be in the trajectory of your life? Right. You know what I mean? Like, you can learn a ton of things, but like, like, like as I always joke with people, I'm always like, I am a, I have a ridiculous amount of useless knowledge like knowledge that no one's ever going to need or want but it's it's entertaining for me like for me it's star wars like you want to know anything about star wars i can tell you anything and everything you have a vast is that gonna knowledge. make me any money is that am i gonna do anything with that absolutely well technically not. you could but i entertain myself yeah, like, so yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. I do. You're, you I, could I, make me money my friends can get along and do that but like at I mean, university you're right there are things you're gonna learn there are classes i took at um that i i don't even i honestly couldn't even remember i'd have to go through my transcripts and be like oh yeah i did take that class oh yeah i forgot about that but then there's other things that you can learn and you can pick up that you're that are just they're invaluable. You yeah. can't put a denomination of money on it, you know? And I think just like any other I think one of the greatest things I learned in journalism when I was working in broadcasting was the ability to discern like and read stories because there's a, there's every writer has an agenda, has an angle and, and has a purpose. Not to say that every agenda is bad and every angle is bad or good. You just have to learn how to have discernment to figure out what are they trying to say. And then you, on the inverse of that, you also have to keep in mind that, you know, snakeskin oil salesmen are always going to be around. They just mm-hmm. change their form. So when you get on things like YouTube or Google and you're looking information up, you have to have a discernment to say, okay, is this person telling, what this person telling me makes sense? Okay, let me cross reference that with 15 other YouTubers. Okay, what's the through line that they're all saying? That's the piece of information I want to right. go on to. You know what I mean? Not this like 10x, I mean, nothing wrong with texting your life, but like text your life by doing it this way. It's like, well, that worked for Grant Cardone. And this is like a big thing. I, I'm like coming to terms with in my, as I enter my 40s, is like, I don't want to be Grant Cardone. I want to be Chris Chang. Yeah. You know, and everyone wants to be someone else. Like, uh, not to get, you know, super spiritual, but we both are God fearing men. You know, in the Bible, we, you hear the story of David and Goliath. And a lot of people know David and Goliath, the story of David slaying, you know, the Philistine, the, the giant. And People forget that like before he does that, Saul offers David his armor and his sword. Mm-hmm. And he's mm-hmm. like, here, man, take all this stuff on. David puts it all on and he's like, yeah, this doesn't fit me. Right. Yeah. This doesn't fit me. I'm just gonna go out there and sling it. Mm-hmm. And he does. And it's like that is that is a life lesson right there, where it's like you you can't make it someone else's way. You can take maybe some things they learned and, and some ideas that they did and apply it to your life and see how applicable it is, but don't try and use it as a roadmap. You know what I mean? And I think that's, again, where you, I love your YouTube channel. Like, you're not telling people, like, hey, do this, buy this multi-purpose home and, or this multifamily home, buy this, buy this, buy this and you're going to be as rich as me. No, just like, it's like, hey, these are the things I did. This is where it kind of went. See how this applies to your life. See where you're at. I had this amount of money. Maybe you have a little bit less. Maybe you have a little bit more. Maybe you're in this market and mm-hmm. this is what it looks like. But here are the things you want to look out for. Those are great educators. And I think you do that really well. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's a that's a definitely a fair point. There's a lot of things that, that we could touch on. Um, but that last point, 
staying all true to yourself and having authenticity in what you do um, is also undeniable. Like Hermosi had talked about is like when you just talk about things that you're, you're doing and you've done, nobody can refute that. You can say, I ate oatmeal this morning. Like that's a fact, yep. you know, like and so talking about like I bought this property on seller financing or creative financing. I bought this fourplex and this is how it worked out and basically saying like. I'm doing it this way. I'm not sure if it's going to work for you, but here's the kind of the way that I did it. And hopefully that provides value. And and I've kind of always lived my life that way because I've always felt maybe as especially growing up, like as a young man, I've always felt like there was years that I put off YouTube just because I'm like, am I even qualified to speak on on this? You know, right. obviously my views have changed because I do feel that, you know, my experience has qualified me. But, you know, God, God always says he's like, you know, they, they, he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And so I kind of felt called to like share my, you know, and whatever way that he uses me for that, it's still to be determined. But, but yeah, building somewhat of an audience and having people who actually care, um, if I can lend any information that that's kind of what I'm trying to do, just go through that basic, like I've was from here and now I'm here. And if it helps you, great. And if it doesn't, I'm sure there's other people who are further along the line that can help you. you and know? absolutely. And people hopefully aren't just looking at your channel. They're looking at other channels. And they're like, okay, I see what this. And hopefully maybe they're doing specifically with real estate. They're looking at someone who's in their area. Of course, Because yeah. you can speak and tell everyone about real estate, blah, 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 blah. But it's it's very, I feel, like again, like maybe I may be ignorant in this, but like it's hyper-specific to Miami. Very, Someone from, very. you know, Asheville, North Carolina is not going to have the same real estate experience or have the same real estate market as it mm -hmm. does in Miami. And so Miami is such a weird market. Right? It's so different. It, it is. Just the way that real estate is even transacted here. Like, we, like I'll get agents from different places that will come and they're like, you guys do real estate this way? Like, the, from the contracts, the way it's negotiated, but also just the values. Obviously, it's weird. Like, the whole country is like hurting from um, from deflation or rather depreciation in their property. They're losing a ton of transactions. And here Miami is like, oh, yeah, we're just... So like interest rates are going up and we're still buying real estate. Like it's very, very weird. Um, but also Miami's like, I, I heard somebody say Miami's like the new LA, whether that's true or not. It's like the place where I guess people are flocking to where the money is going, where the entertainment business is going. And it's unrecognizable from like you and I grew up here our entire lives. And, and so now I'm looking at it. It's great from a real estate perspective. I'm like, I love the city. It's, it's a baby city. It's matured yes. and grown in our own, very own eyes. You can't really say that about like New York or Chicago, yeah. like, They've, they've been cemented for many years um, and many generations. And now we're kind of just seeing like when we were growing up, I was I always tell my friends this. I'm like when they come and live here, I'm like when I was growing up in high school, nobody knew what Brickle was. No, it didn't it, exist. It, it was like, a field. Yeah, it was. It, it, there, like where Brickle Brick, City Center is, I remember in college it was a field. It yeah, was it was lot. Tobacco was Road and lot. like whatever that was, right? But even, even before that, there were still some buildings in Brickle back then. Okay. But like I remember I could clearly recall when I moved to downtown – like I discovering Brooklyn maybe a few months before I moved there. And I was like, what is this place? You know? And then calling my friends and just saying, Hey, um, you guys want to come over? And they're like, where exactly is that? Because it was so like completely like alien to most people that lived in Miami. Cause most people that I knew and we grew up like in West Miami, like West Kendall and things of that nature. So like, that's not the Miami I knew. And now Miami is something completely different, whether bad or good, you know, whatever. But, yeah. but it, but it is crazy. Um, Anyway, so a couple things before we wrap up that I wanted to ask you about. Right now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, you lived many different lives. You were a news anchor, you know, then you got into the real estate space, lending money, and then buying real estate, which you're still somewhat doing as well. Um, but then I've also noticed that your passion has been kind of leading you to uh, production, which is, makes sense, right? Because, you know, you want to get into the consulting and YouTube and all that stuff because you do know a lot of uh, on that on that industry. And, you know, what's crazy about it is that every industry needs that now. Back then it was like, uh, maybe I want to be on camera. A lot of people don't like being on camera. Let's just put it out that way. But now it's kind of like, oh, if you're not a business that is on camera, you won't be a business it's the in the new, next it's, 10 it's years. The, it's a new medium. It's the yeah. new main medium. It's not newspapers or print anymore. It's it's not. It's no longer optional. I think. No, it's not. And it actually, the the genesis for all of this actually began in my segue out of of broadcasting and TV. So, like the joke in broadcasting and TV is like, if you want to retire early, you go into PR. And so that's how <laughs> I kind of transitioned into PR, uh -huh. and I worked at an agency that was awesome. My my old boss JP, shout out to him. He put up with a lot of crazy stuff. I was in a crazy t time period of my life. but Going through your mid-life crisis. Your started, quarter life crisis. Yeah, my quarter life crisis. He started this agency that was really unique with a focus on video content. And 
So he was early on. Yeah, this is and this is like 2012. Okay. And he was we were doing media training and media consulting and getting people on, you know, the various media outlets basically is what our speciality was, but we also did like legacy media and stuff. Yeah, like and that. then we and then we did things like um, you know, social media branding, uh, uh, content videos, branding videos, things like that and that kind of like again, because I came from the old world of of broadcasting and TV, I didn't see the power in YouTube. But now, fast forward ten years, I'm like, man, I should have jumped on the boat then. Like, I was, I was. Would have been so much easier, right? Been, not only so much easier, but it's just when you can, when you're an early adopter, you know this, like in real estate. Yeah. If you get in pre-construction, you're gonna, that's the best deal you're gonna get on that piece of property. You're never gonna get a better right. deal on a property than pre-construction. I mean, because if it goes below pre-construction, like, <laughs> well, Lord do you want right? to buy it? No. Exactly. So it's just like, um, that's actually where I got into it, and then. You, it's funny, you you follow your life and you wonder why, so message to young people, you, you may wonder why I'm doing these random things. See the value in these random things you're doing in your life and see how it's going to be useful in the future because my media background got me familiar with camera work, being on camera, how to put together a script, things like that. But the strategy behind it, I picked up in PR and in marketing. And how do you use that? Because it's great for you to shoot it, but how do you use it? How do you market it? How do you get it out there? Because mm-hmm. that's crucial. And then you develop as you get older the eye for it, which is kind of like what I'm developing now. Is I'm starting to realize I'm like, oh, I think if people did this, like I gave you some suggestions in, in the su- in your studio. Yeah, if this production wife. looks way better, it's thanks to Chris, so. <laughs> <laughs> which <it> does. <laughs> but yeah, and so yeah. Like, that's kind of how I got here. It's just like it's a culmination of, and then a lot of it also is my our, my time in the church. Mm. You know, helping build the the local church that we're in. You know, I was part of the broadcasting team, and, and so I was basically helping the church get their video presence in in hard. Guard. Talk about amazing production, right? Like, yeah. I mean, just like a quick caveat. But Vu is like, a they're crushing it, but oh, yeah, but I think what drew me also too, um, and I think draws in a lot of I wouldn't even just say young people because they have so many people from different you know age groups and and it's very diversified but the point is like the production and the quality that you're getting at the end of the day yeah it's a church it's meant to you know do the work of god and spread the gospel which is amazing but in today's world you it needs to act as a production it needs to act as a business in order to expand as much as possible and um i know that there's probably some you know debate on whether it should or shouldn't happen you know that that's not a time for the topic but i think what they're doing is so amazing and and you're right because as you grow up in life or as you go through life if you will you're just really skill stacking yep. you go one place you find a well, skill you are you're paying attention ideally yeah and if you're intentional about skill stacking you're like hey this this is not the destination yep. but this is part of the journey of what i want to get out of and like hey how can i bring value number one you know because nobody's really going to help you just to help you um but how can i help how can i help this organization first and then what can i get out of it in the process of doing so and then going through life and just stacking those skills like you were just saying because it's kind of funny how it's brought you full circle right cuz you have gone through this whole thing um and you're you're like in different areas of your life have led you to the other one inadvertently but it's all kind of going back to the same production that you've had um what what are you, where do you see chris in the next few years i i Doing this, this is what I love to do. I love talking to people. I love chatting with people. I think the the old adage was content is king. Video content is now king. And so it's, it's a matter of, it's like, let's just make an, an analogy for the, the real estate viewers, right? Like if you're a real estate agent and you got a new property, you take a few pictures. First, you, you list it, right? Is that going to get you anywhere? Maybe, maybe not. Then you take some pictures. Is that going to get you anywhere? Maybe, maybe not. Now, if you post on your social media, you post on the, the, the website, your website, your brokerage's website, and you've got a video now, and it's giving a tour, and people can get a feel of the area, the actual unit, that is what's going gonna, is what's gonna to crush it. And so it's just a matter of just using the tools in your toolbox. And now we all have access to cameras. Mm-hmm. And before, you never had access to a camera. Like, even joking, like, in, in college, like, when the iPhone came out, like, I was a senior in college and it was this foreign thing i remember but it's a joke now that in college everyone when they go out would actually carry a real camera like a snapshot we would always yeah, well, we didn't have our, our phones now everyone literally has at minimum in your cell in your cell phone 
a really good camera. And the, yeah, and the quality of that camera is like exactly. And so you you now have the instrument, the tool. You have another tool on YouTube that you can go on. How do I shoot? Oh, I like the way they did that. Oh, I like that angle. Oh, I like that. And that's what I do. When I watch people's like YouTubes, I, I I go number one for the information. Are you a good storyteller? Are you giving me information? Are you making? Are you contextualizing and making it easy to absorb? And then two, what's the production? Because if a thousand people are doing it, just like you know, in the real estate in, uh, industry, there's a billion real estate agents, right? Who are the ones that crush it? The ones that are always working, the ones that are always available, the ones that are super professional, that are that have their stuff together. You know what I mean? It's not the it's not Charlie who does it on the weekends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah, it's okay, Charlie. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a good, good stay at home dad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong saying home dad, by the way. I'm saying yeah. so don't don't shoot fire, don't shoot crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but why like, you, you can say that. That's why you can exactly. say that. Exactly. But like my point is, is like, you know, you, you know the part-time real estate agents. You know them. Yeah. Many, you know? many out there. Many. But the ones who are crushing it are the or ones full time. Yeah. yeah, they're fully committed for sure. And and in anything in life. I I I challenge you to find anybody who's doing anything part time and is like really, really good at it, you know? We don't have the luxury of that. Yeah. We don't have the, which is why it's kind of like, even when you ask me, like, where, I, where do I see myself? Like, right now, I'm in a season where I'm, I'm a stay at home dad. I've got three beautiful boys that I, you know, I'm raising right now. And it's easy to get distracted with the, with the temptation of going back into YouTube and doing that. But it's like, Right now, I'm, I'm, I'll am dip my toes in. I do this. Yeah. I do some other things that are very easy for me to do that don't require me to invest too much because we all have the same 24 hours where we invest in it. A lot of my time goes towards my kids. Yeah. Right? And that's, what, that's what's important for me. But they're going to get to a point where they're at school and I'm going to have yeah. more free time. So they're not going to be Yeah, and especially now at this stage in their life, it's the most important time that you need to yeah. be spending with them. Like within the first seven years, it's like really where they're – personality and exactly. like everything starts developing and and i know like that's another thing i think you just, like we're talking about like younger generations and things like that it's like i think everyone wants everything right now and sometimes a, like the deferred satisfaction is exponentially better than an instant gratification you know what i mean when you can defer and say okay it's not a no it's just not right, right now. now right but i know i'm going to keep that back there in the burner and i'm going to get to it because I'm gifted, I'm talented, and I have the drive to go get that. You know, just like an investment property for you. You know, there's probably buildings you drive by every day, and you're like, I want to own that. I wanna yeah, own for that. sure. And you're just, it's not I heard a saying the other day. I forget who said it, so I'll, you know, I apologize for not giving you credit. But it was like the best entrepreneurs are the ones who are macro patient and micro urgent. Ooh, and it's just so good. And and when he said that, I felt that because I think in ten to twenty years. But every day I'm like, dude, we got to get this done right now. We got to get it. like, it's so weird. It's such a weird dichotomy of just being like two type of mentalities and people like I expect things to take a while. Like the whole YouTube thing. When I started it, I even told one of my friends when I started, I'm like, I'm going to give this a year, even if I get zero subscribers, mm -hmm. because I, 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 I owe it that I owe it a commitment of one video a week for Absolutely. a year, you know, um, and then that's obviously continued. But. Um, I always look at it. I'm going to give this two years, five years, you know, and and investment properties are like that. I, I sit with some investors now and, and I kind of speak to them, especially if they're getting into the investment game. And I usually tell them, look, if you're buying this property to retire off the cash flow, it's not this is not for you. Like, and that's great advice, by the way. Like some people would take that and they're like, that's not going to get me the deal sealed. That's not going to close this deal for me. But what it may do is, while it may be a deferred gratification, what, so what I mean by that is maybe you don't get that property closed right then, but maybe that guy comes back to you a month and goes, hey, I know we looked at this property, but what, what about this? Sure, yeah. And maybe it's a property that's $100,000 more, which increases your, your commission that you get. I think people are so consumed with getting everything immediately and it just being instant, this microwave generation that it's like, again, let's look at the word investment mm -hmm. it's not a flip right i was talking it's not a guarantee this, yeah right like an investment requires you to pay something or put something into something and then let time accrue and make it yeah good, right it's not let me just get put something into it and then get double back but that's what cash flow is and and ultimately that's what i explained to you i'm like the cash flow is oxygen for you to wait yes because if you're getting paid money whether 300 500 a thousand two thousand dollars a month it's it, your first investment is not going to change your life, but it'll be the catalyst to change your life because as you get oxygen, the cash flow, you're not thinking, hey, I should sell this. And it prevents you from 
selling prematurely because the end goal of investing is for that to appreciate. Yeah. And then let time to do its thing. You're making your three, five, seven hundred dollars a month. It's again not going to change your life. You're probably putting that in an account somewhere. Um, and it, you're not thinking, wow, this is a bad investment. That's what that cash flow is doing. So that ultimately three, five, ten years down the line go like this, and you're happy with your cash flow. And before you know, it, I'm calling you saying it's worth three hundred thousand dollars more now. Would you like to sell it? cash out on your 300, buy something bigger, and then do the same thing, you know? And then, or, you know, cash out, refi, use that equity a little bit into buying another property and like double, doubling up your portfolio. So those are the things that people need to be doing, but you need to think long-term. You need to be thinking three, four, five, 10 years down the road. Absolutely. I think if you're looking at an investment and you're looking, I mean, any kind of investment, by the way, the longer you're willing to see it go, the better off and the more successful you sure. probably end up being at achieving that goal. If you start setting timelines where it's got to be in a shortened period, I mean, this could be anything. Like you're dating a girl, right? Yeah. You're like, all right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. If she's not in, if I don't know within the yeah. first month, like a month, bro, you haven't even been through. It. You haven't right. gone through one holiday season. You haven't gone through like you know what I mean. You have to experience things with people, friendships, anything, churches, whatever it is, insta whatever it is. When you invest your time, when you invest whatever it is, if you set too short of the demarcation line you're gonna set yourself up for failure. yeah you just 100%. have to understand that things take time there's nothing in nature that's instant it's that's maybe if you're lucky yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right i think Please don't yeah, yeah. on the you know lion eats you alive i was watching that Joe Rogan. Oh, I was like, I terrible way to die maybe it was a grizzly bear either way I don't know if a bear eats you alive yeah no, it eats you, yeah not. Before this divulges into, uh, uh, you know, watching what these monkey, um, chimpanzees are doing in the nature, in the wild. Um, yeah, no, I think that would be a good place to end. Um, Chris, I appreciate your time. Um, yeah, I, for sure. I'm sure there's going to be a part two because there's, there's, I think there's 17 topics we didn't talk about, <laughs> wanted to talk about, but, you know, we could go on forever. But anyways, do you have anything to say to the to this beautiful audience? No, I, I just love what you're doing. I would say... That I, I thank you for inviting me on things like this. These things are like little thing, like little like breadcrumbs for me to get back into this. Um, you should, man. Your talent is well missed, and for many people who haven't even experienced it, um, they don't even know what they're missing out on. So, like, <laughs> and you're the best real estate agent I know. I, 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 and, and listen, go, oh, man. yeah, it's all it, it's all good. We got you. We got yours. I think we got we got we got as much as we can. We'll just go back and forth yeah. between yeah. the two. But I I would say you know I'm proud of you. I I love that decided to stick through to this because you know uh this is not a knock take this as a compliment when you were telling me you were gonna start a youtube channel i was like this dude is doomed oh yeah i was like this guy is never gonna make it it's gonna be terrible and bro and by the way i still have not made it <laughs> so you're crushing it so shut up you know you're crushing it you know you're crushing and i'm proud of you man and so keep going um and i love you bro like legit like thank you for inspiring me thank you for pushing me thank you for Constantly asking me when I'm gonna have my YouTube channel. It's coming. Yeah. Well, until then, you can. You're always welcome back on mine. Thank you. And then I expect. And and I expect to be welcome on yours. Like oh, that's a demand. Yeah. I need to be absolutely. the first guest. All right, guys. Well, with that said, if you found value from this video, make sure you like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Um, and then you know, Chris will at some point keep us updated yeah. with um all his stuff. And then when I do have that link finally, I'll put it somewhere in the description box so you can follow him on his channel whenever he does decide to do that. Um, and it's definitely going to be worth a follow. So with that, guys, thank you for tuning in. Chris, I appreciate you, brother. I'll see you all next week and God bless.